Environmental Science, Subject Code Triple Three, Module Four, Lesson Eleven, Environment and Health, Part Two. Hello, learners. Welcome to Environmental Science course for senior secondary level in NIOS. I am Nilam Gupta, course coordinator of Environmental Science. Welcome you in this program. Dear learners, in our previous program of Lesson Eleven, Environment and Health, we discuss problems related sanitation in habitations as well as different modes of spreading. Waterborne diseases caused by pathogens, vectors, and chemical pollutants. Also, discuss about various air pollutants. Those are responsible for health hazards in the area of agriculture, cottage, and in large industries and mining, etc. We have also discussed about cancer and carcinogens and their control methods. During this program, we will discuss diseases caused by smoking, heavy metal toxicity. methods of their prevention we will also discuss different kinds of occupational health hazards while working in mines textile cement chemical and paper industries so the objectives of this program are list diseases caused due to smoking heavy metal toxicity and methods of their prevention list different kinds of occupational health hazards explain different ways by which humans get exposed to air pollution hazards while working in mines textile cement chemical and paper industries first we will take smoking smoking tobacco is one of the cause of lung cancer it can also cause pneumonia emphysema and chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases smoking may increase the chances of causing cancer of stomach liver prostate colon and rectum use of smokeless tobacco chewing tobacco and snuff causes cancer of mouth and throat do you know why once nicotine enters in the body a smoker becomes addicted to it then the other cigarette ingredients are what causes cancer the cancer causing ingredients contain thousands of chemicals and around 70 of those chemicals are cancerous all which are deadly see figure in the next slide it is because tobacco contains a powerful substance called nicotine which takes less than 20 second for it is for it to reach the brain from inhaled cigarette smoke the main way that smoking causes cancer is by damaging our dna including key genes that protects us against cancer Many of the chemicals found in cigarettes that have been shown to cause DNA damage are benzene, polonium, benzopyrene and nitrosamines. This is further worsened by other substances in cigarette. For example, chromium makes poison like benzopyrene stick more strongly to DNA, increasing the chances of serious damage. Peat chemicals are like arsenic and nickel interfere with pathways for repairing damaged dna this makes it even more likely that damaged cell will eventually turn cancerous let me also tell you dear learners that the risk of lung cancer increases even in a non smoker if exposed to environmental tobacco smoke this is called passive smoking so passive smoking is the inhalation of smoke by person other than the intended active smoker it occurs when tobacco smoke permeates an environment causing its inhalation by people within that environment however the risk of cancer begin to decrease soon after quitting smoking and chewing tobacco this risk continues to decline gradually after quitting what are the health benefits of quitting smoking is seen in next slide if you quit smoke for 20 minutes blood pressure drops to near the level before you had last your last cigarette if you quit smoke for 8 hours carbon monoxide level in the blood drops to normal if you quit smoke for 24 hours chance of heart attack decreases if you quit smoke for 24 hours chance of heart attack decreases if you quit smoke for 2 weeks to 3 months circulation improves lung function increases up to 30% If you quit smoke for one year, chances of heart attack is cut in half. If you quit smoke for five years, 
risk is reduced to labels of a non smokers if you quit smoke for 10 years risk of dying from lung cancer is about half of a current smoker another important environmental hazard is uv radiation about which we have already discussed in lesson 10 module 4 of environmental science it is the main factor responsible for skin cancer including basal cell carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma and possibly melanoma Ultraviolet radiation is composed of three wavelengths, UVA, UVB and UVC. With the ongoing debate about the best way to get vitamin D, there is a huge amount of misinformation surrounding ultraviolet radiation. Solar UVR reaches people on the ground directly from the sun, scattered from the open sky and reflected from the environment. 90% of UVR may penetrate cloud, shade gives up to 50% ambient UVR, sand reflects up to 25% of UVR, up to 50% of daily ultraviolet radiation is emitted between 11 am to 2 pm, 40% of UV radiation penetrates water to a depth of 50 cm as shown in the previous figure. UVA is a long wavelength and accounts up to 95% of the solar UV radiations. Reaching the earth surface, it can penetrate into the deeper layers of the skin and has for years been thought to play a major role in skin aging and wrinkling. Recent studies suggest that it may also initiate and aggravate development of skin cancers. Although UVA rays are less intense than UVB rays, they are present all the year round and depending upon the time of the year can be 30 to 50 times more prevalent than UVB rays. Also UVA radiations can penetrate glass and clouds, thus we are exposed to large doses of UVA throughout our lifetime. UVB is the middle range of ultraviolet radiations with wavelengths between 290 to 320 nm. It is responsible for burning, thinning, acceleration of skin aging and play a very key role in the development of skin cancer. The intensity of UVB varies by season, location and time of day. UVB rays do not penetrate glass. UVC is the shortest and highest energy, UV with wavelengths less than 290 nm, wherever since it is filtered by the ozone layer in the atmosphere. These wavelengths do not reach the earth surface and do not contribute to skin damage in humans. So now you can understand why thinning of the ozone layer is a cause of concern for the health sector besides the environmentalists. Effects of all three types of radiations have been shown in the figure slide. About the ionizing radiations and effects you have learned in lesson number 10 module 4 of environmental science. Last but not the least are the heavy metals present in the environment which are a real threat to our health. Next we will discuss that is heavy metals toxicity. Heavy metals are naturally occurring elements that have a high atomic weight and a density of at least 5 times greater than that of water. They are multiple industrial Domestic, agriculture, medical and technological applications can lead to their wide distribution in the environment, raising concern over their potential effect on human health and the environment. Their toxicity depends on the dose, route of exposure, chemical composition, age, gender, genetics and nutritional status of exposed individuals. Because of their high degree of toxicity, arsenic, cadmium, chromium, lead and mercury rank among the priority metals that are of public health concern. These metallic elements are considered systematic toxicants that are known to induce multiple organ damage even at lower levels of exposure. They are also known to cause cancer in humans. Apart from losses to the environment, resulting from mine waste and primary processing. Many of these metals are utilized in products that are inherently dissipative. Examples of such usage includes fuels, lubricants, solvents, fire retardants, 
stabilizers, floculants, pigments, biocides and preservatives. It is necessary to ban or discourage the dissipative uses of the hazardous heavy metals. We can also increase the efficiency of recycling of those materials that are not replaceable in principle. Here you can see the various sources of heavy metals and their cycling in soil, water and air ecosystem in this figure. It should be noted that the content of metals in tissues generally build up from left to right indicating the vulnerability of humans to heavy metal toxicity. Let us study the toxic effects of some of the heavy metals which are the major threat to our health. First one is lead. Lead interferes with body processes and is toxic to many organs and tissues including the heart, bones, intestine, kidney, reproductive and nervous system. It interferes with the development of the nervous system and is therefore particularly toxic to children causing potentially permanent learning and behavior disorders. Symptoms include abdominal pain, confusion, headache, anemia, irritability and in severe cases seizures, coma and death. Left side shows Various cities in, at risk in India have lead content in water. There are four categories that is alarming, high, medium and low. Alarming category includes Kolkata, Kochi, Mumbai, Pune, Nagpur, Nasik, Guwahati includes alarming risk category. Delhi, Coimbatore, Madurai and Bhubaneswar includes high risk cities. Chennai, Ludhiana, Surat, Gajabad are medium cities and Bengaluru, Ahmedabad, Hyderabad, Indore, Bhopal, Lucknow are low cities. The right side of the figure shows symptoms of lead poisoning in children as well as adults. In children, irritability, low of appetite, weight loss, sluggishness and fatigue, abdominal pain, vomiting, constipation and learning difficulties and in adult high blood pressure, declines of mental functioning, pain, numbness or tingling of the extremities, muscular weaknesses, abdominal pain, mood disorder, memory loss, etc. Next figure shows mercury toxicity. Mercury poisoning also known as hygrogyria or mercurialism is a type of metal poisoning and a medical condition caused by exposure to mercury or its compound. Mercury is a heavy metal occurring in several forms that can cause death with less than a gram. Kodai Canal mercury poisoning is one of the well chronicled cases of toxic pollution anywhere in the world. Kodai Canal pollution is a proven case of mercury contamination by Hindustan Unilever in the process of making mercury thermometers for export around the world. The exposure of the environmental abuse led to the closure of the factory in 2001 and opened up a series of issues in India such as corporate liability, corporate accountability and corporate negligence. Next is arsenic toxicity. Arsenic is another metal of concern for human health. Arsenic poisoning is caused by elevated levels of arsenic in the body. The cause of arsenic poisoning is from groundwater, which is often due to naturally occurring high concentration of arsenic in deeper levels of groundwater. It is a high profile problem due to the use of deep tube wells for water supply, figure shown in next slide. Sources of arsenic whale water, mining, industry and pesticides and arsenic poisoning causes hyperkeratosis or scaling skin and pigment changes, circulatory problems in skin, increased cancer risk some of which are mentioned in figure, nerve damage. As shown in figure, now let us talk about effects of cadmium on human health. Cadmium is widely and increasingly used in industries, corrosion protection coating, nickel cadmium barriers and several other applications. It may enter the aquatic and ambient 
environment as a toxic pollutant from various anthropogenic sources such as zinc, copper and lead mining. Various industries like iron and steel, cement production, electroplating, phosphate fertilizers, various etc. Cadmium contamination of the fishes and endemic bone diseases is Itaitai reported from Japan where several hundreds of people were affected was the main cause of concern. The cadmium intrusions to the environment can be abated and controlled by adoption of various alternative options regarding emissions and effluents, thorough adoption of clean technology and implementation of stipulated environmental standards. You can see here the various sources and pathways of cadmium into coastal water and the ill effects of cadmium poisoning on human health. Occupational safety and health also referred to as workplace health and safety in an area concerned with the safety. Health and welfare of people engaged in work or employment, the goals of occupational safety and health programs include to foster a safe and healthy work environment. An occupational hazard is a hazard experienced in the workplace which include chemical hazards, biological hazards, psychological hazards and physical hazards. Look at the figure in the next slide. Dear learner, we must not forget that scientific studies that occupational diseases and work related health problems are prevalent among workers involved in heavy physical activities. Exposure to chemicals in the workplace can cause acute or long term detrimental health effects. There are many types of hazards, just chemicals including neurotoxins, immune agents, dermatologic agents, carcinogens, reproductive toxins, systematic toxins, asthmagens, pneumoconiotic agents and sensitizers. Common chemical hazards include skin irritation, disfiguring burn, eye injury or blindness caused by corrosive chemical products, toxic byproducts such as vapor and fumes caused by mixing incompatible chemicals, serious burns from flammable solvent that catch on fire, injury from exploding container as such as spray cans, poisoning from accidental swallowing especially with young children. In coal mining areas, coal dust is the main air pollutant to which miners are exposed every day. The deposits of coal dust do makes miners lung look black instead of healthy pink and the name black lung disease or pneumoconiosis or anthracosis. A lung disease of older worker in the coal industries caused by inhalation over many years of small amounts of coal dust, there is no treatment except stoppage of exposure before it becomes very serious. Next is noise hazards on human health. Noise is one of the most common occupational health hazard. Noise exposure can cause two kinds of health effects, auditory effects and non-auditory effects. Auditory effects include hearing impairment resulting from excessive noise exposure, noise included permanent hearing loss is the main concern related to occupational noise exposure. Non-auditory effects include stress related physiological and behavioral effects. To prevent adverse outcomes of noise exposure, noise levels should be reduced to acceptable levels. The best method of noise reduction is to use engineering modifications to the noise source itself or to the workplace environment where technology cannot adequately control the problem. Personal hearing protection such as earplugs can be used. Personal protection however should be considered as an interim measure while other means of reducing workplace noise are being explored and implemented. Learners, Please recall noise pollution and its ill effects from lesson 10, module 4 of environmental science. 
we have talked about pesticides, fertilizers, chemicals, heavy metals, etc. as environmental hazards. Before concluding, I would like to also mention here about allergens. Allergy occurs when a person's immune system reacts to substances in the environment that are harmless for most people. These substances are known as allergen and are found dust, mites, pets, pollen, insects, molds, food and some medicines. Allergic reaction begins when the allergen enters the body, triggering an antibody response. The antibodies attach themselves to special cells called mast cells. When the pollen comes into contact with the antibodies, the mast cells respond to releasing certain substances like histamines and cytokines. When the release of histamines is due to an allergen, the resulting swelling and inflammation is extremely irritating and uncomfortable. Details is shown in the figure. Depending on the allergen and where it enters in the body, different symptoms may be found as you see here. Before we wrap up, we would like to recap the main points that is what you have learnt. Smoking tobacco is one, one of the cause of lung cancer. It can also cause pneumonia, emphysema and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and cancer of different parts of the body. Solar UVA reaches people on the ground directly from the sun, scattered from the open sky and reflected from the environment. In mines such as coal mines, the workers exposed to coal dust for long time suffer from black lung disease for which there is no treatment except stoppage of exposure before it becomes very serious. Sneezing, runny nose, hay fever, etc. are caused by exposure to some substances in the environment known as allergens, not necessarily harmful by themselves. Asthma is a disease which causes an obstruction to airflow in the respiratory passages and may be an allergic disorder which may be even be fatal. Many heavy metals such as lead, mercury, arsenic and cadmium present in the environment at higher concentration cause adverse reaction often leading to cancer and death. Workers in mine, stone quarries, some industries etc. exposed to lot of noise for varying length of time. Long exposure to sound more than 85 or 90 dB may cause annoyance, disturbed sleep, high blood pressure and temporary to permanent loss of hearing. Dear learners, this is all about lesson 11, environment and health part 2. We will come again to meet you with a new program of environmental science. Thank you.